A trip to the festival is a great way to relax and forget about the problems and the pace of modern life. There is the sky, the grass, and the tents, as if time has stopped. And not only fighters work, the others are busy as well. Everyone has his own task, without which the life in the field camp would be impossible. Everyone is busy, and everyone makes a contribution, each according to his own abilities. Battle of the Nations is a model event for reenactors and tourists. I'm helping to organize the festival, performing different functions necessary to make everything work properly. Our common goal, no matter what national team we are, be it Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, Poland, is to make a decent festival. Everyone living in a field camp has certain responsibilities. Men collect firewood, women cook, but there are certain responsibilities without which the festival cannot exist, namely organizing people. This is an art not available to everyone. Each national team has a lot of people, and each must be fully organized to avoid wasting time and to make the festival enjoyable forever. I am commandant of this camp. I'm responsible for water supply, food, transportation of people to the city, organization of duties, food preparation, and so on. People come to me, ask certain questions, and since I know more than any of them, I can help, give a piece of advice, or tell them to whom they can address this question. Campers live a prosaic yet unusual life, and the story is visible in every detail and action. Each is carefully recreated in reliance upon museum exhibits and pictorial sources, in clothing, food, sleep, and wakefulness. All historically accurate. Casual spectators see the top of the iceberg, but reenactors know that difficult work stands behind it all. We would like to tell people about the movement of historical reenactment of the Middle Ages and about historical medieval battle because that's the most important component. Because it's a seriously big subculture, as you can see, hundreds of participants come to this festival, and there are thousands of them all over the world, those who are engaged in historical reenactment of the Middle Ages and who practice historical medieval battle. And of course, to show the audience, to show people that it's worth their attention, it's worthy of the time spent on it, not less than boxing or football and certainly no less spectacular. So, the first round, semi-final. The best men are left on the course, the strongest, fastest fighters. They deliver strong blows, trying to find weak points and avoid the blows of their opponents. The fighters are now using long swords, a true knight's weapon, which makes it possible to hit both from the close and long range. But the men do not forget about the clinch as well. Please note that they beat rivals in full force. I recall the fight consists of three rounds. Bastard swords allowed to strike hard, and if one fails to evade a stroke, the result could be a knockdown or even a knockout. The score is four to two. The second round in triathlon is conducted on one-handed swords and with bucklers, small fist shields, Stop, stop, fighters separate. The third round, Shield Sword, finally allows us to determine the winner of this spectacular category. Please note that the Russian fighter's style is offensive, while the Ukrainian is defensive. The fighters conduct a series of blows to overcome the defense, or try to distract with tricks in order to deliver an unapparent but very significant and perhaps a decisive blow. Stop! Fighting on the list is always observed by spectators and participants of the festival. Vasilya Vukola, Buckler Sword, one and a half minutes of actual time. And here is the final fight between the two strongest Russian individual fighters, Ivan Vasilyev and Sergei Ukolov. They are the best of the best. They are unmatchable. They are members of the same national team, but they do not allow this to deter them from giving it their all. Stop! Time! City of Moscow, Ukolov. This is the final fight, the most important one. Who will win? Stop the fight! Let's support the fighters! The fighters are armed with shields and one-handed swords. The third and final round, 
Strength against strength. Experience against experience. The spectators hold their breath. Marshals watch intently the highly technical fight between the two top fighters. Only one will be the winner. This is the most important fight in the duel category. Stop! Time! Retreat to your positions! Each national team has those who fight and others to take care of the camp. There's always a lot of different work to do. On a whole, our delegation is about 70 people, and that includes both the military component and the support team. For nearly 14 years, I have been engaged in fencing and reenactment. Everyday problems of the reenactment camps are special too. I have been many years in our club, over 10 years. It's a classic situation when a man comes to the event with unfinished armor. He simply failed to finish it at home due to some reason. So it has to be finished on the fly, right at the event, using any available materials. The festival gathers fans of historic reenactment from different countries. It is the place where you can meet people from other regions. Communication among the inhabitants of the camp is constant because there's free time despite the number of festival events. It's used for talking, exchanging experiences, and making new friends. We know Buhart fighters from all regions of Poland because there are not many in Poland unlike Russia and Belarus. There are maybe 100 of our fighters dealing with Buharts on a serious basis with training and so on. Polish reenactors started practicing Buharts seriously about five years ago. The Polish national team is gathered in their camp. Captain Hubert Filipiak is talking to his comrades in arms. They're sharing impressions about the day, analyzing the tournament and the team battle results, and at the same time, trying to solve some organizational issues. The national team of Belarus continues to fight in the 5x5 five five category. Although they're from different clubs, they have to act as a single team, and it was the main challenge. I think we did our best, and we are fully ready for action, and we're expecting a very decent and serious victory. Well, our club Order of the Temple is engaged in the 13th century reenactment. We fight slightly differently. We mainly use swords, shields, and swords, bastard swords. They act a little tougher than we do. It's difficult. We are not strong enough. The national teams of Ukraine and Poland also fought very tough battles, and it was impossible to predict anything in advance. The category 5 versus 5 was difficult for everyone. Russian fighters are in the final now. They had to fight with each other. When you defeat all your rivals, you finally have to fight against your own comrades. Tactically, the Russians are strong, but they are physically strong as well. Not so strong as Belarusians or some Ukrainians, but strong. They are strong and friendly.
The Ukrainian team is also very cool-headed and very well-prepared technically. The guys are strong and in very good shape, but they are not as friendly as the Russians. The fighters of Russia will fight against those of Ukraine. There is no room for concession. In the final, fighters must fight as hard as they can. Emotions beyond the limit. Men irritated. In the heat of the battle, men don't always evaluate referees and opponents fairly. Sometimes this leads to disputes. Marshals must act quickly in spite of fatigue. Their attention cannot waver. Their decisions must be objective and must always be based upon the rules. It doesn't matter which fighter is in front of them. They must be accustomed to conflict and to dealing with fighters whose emotions have been heated up by the fire of battle. When we try to check some of our tactical actions, we are not allowed to do it. And a new bout. The closer to the final, the tougher the battles. The fighters of Russia attack at once. Their opponents from Ukraine are not going to back down. They enter aggressively and decisively, seeking to neutralize the Russians one by one. The best men of both teams are on the list, and they will not give an inch. Those who fight hard against each other on the list usually communicate in a friendly fashion beyond its limits. In non-combat life, most reenactors are friends or close acquaintances. We are all engaged in the same business. We have a common hobby. We all communicate at such events and we do it well. I order a lot of armor from Ukrainian masters and Belarusian as well. I have friends from clubs from different countries. We all have very good friendly relations. Sporting struggle can look tough for a stranger. You know, the thing is, we have no conflicts with the Ukrainian Belarusian teams uh, because we communicate with these people only a little. We hardly know each other, so there's no ground for any conflict. We have more friendly relations among the clubs, and since we cannot properly learn how to bring down a man with a single stroke, we haven't learned to do it with our guys, so we cannot beat other people. Aggression on the list does not travel beyond its limits. The life is peaceful in the camp. They are all my friends. I beat them, push them, but they're still my friends. I drink beer with them. I love these people. There's nothing to do with politics. They're all my friends. Almost all reenactors have buddies and friends in foreign clubs. After the battle, we often have no strength left for aggression. All is left on the course, and even after fierce fighting, for example, we fought against Russia, namely Bern, very fiercely. But in the evening, we had friendly discussions about everything with them. I like the fact that Ukraine has finally begun to practice military historic reenactment. It's very important. Believe me, it's one thing to fight in armor when people dress and bend pieces of iron, trying to beat each other and bring each other down. It's quite another thing when people try to make things that reflect actual historic analogs. It's much more difficult, much more interesting. Just believe me. When a person sees not only the fight as the aim of all this business, but sees a certain gathering and collecting element, namely collecting the right things, that's more important. And the fight comes when it's necessary. National Team of Ukraine! We were divided into three phalanges for a 21 versus 21 battle. We had a central and two side ones. We gathered opponents in the center and surrounded from the sides. Actually, it's a very common tactic. It's difficult to gather a well-coordinated team for this category. We slept only three hours, 
And we didn't have so much energy as we did on previous days. Maybe that's the reason we lost. But I can't say it was the only reason. I'm happy, I think. We did our best with the fighters we arrived with. The most valuable thing at the festival is communication. Of course, there are meetings, and that makes life interesting, and may even change it completely. People sometimes find that special someone. The romance of campfires, and the nature of summer itself, encourages this. For many, though not for all, such festival meetings end up really important events. But one way or another, people return home with a pleasant memory. When I began visiting historic festivals, I met more friends. But the most interesting thing is that I met friends from different states, different countries. Because such festivals, as you know, attract different nations. There are a lot of good people on Earth, and it would be nice to meet them all. You come to the festival and meet people. It's very nice we have such a big event here. It's always good. I met my husband thanks to the reenactment movement. He wasn't a knight at the time. He was knighted later. I was terribly proud of him. And I was pleased to have the man I love become a knight. I was so young at the time and a novice to the club. Quiet evenings in the open air. Busy days on the lists. This is the reality. This is what they love. This is what gives them the energy and the pleasant memories for the future. These people understand each other. They are interested in the same business. They enjoy it together. Several times a year, they come together to socialize, to find out how things are going, to share new knowledge, and to tell old stories. Real lasting friends are made here, and new meetings are found. And when two reenactors form a family, their bond is like that of no other. Well, we met at a historical festival. We are worried for each other, of course, take care of each other, and we understand how difficult our hobby is. It is a special time for a couple who met at the major festival. In this case, it means more to them than anyone else. In fact, we met at a medieval reenactment nights festival held in Piasnichno. Then we were at Grunwald. We met in 2005. We've been together for five years. Wedding? I think that will happen next year. That is, in a year. Next year, we will come to Houghton as a husband and wife. Festival life is full of surprises. But only participants can feel that. And every time preparing for an event, history enthusiasts do not know what to expect. They can only guess.